welcome to the National Portrait Gallery. Uh, I'm Catherine Mayak, I'm the Adult Programmes Officer here. Um, this evening's performance is part of our Chasing Mirrors season, which explores contemporary visual art and culture inspired by connections with the greater Middle East. Uh, this season is bringing a rich mix of storytellers, artists, writers and dancers, historians and musicians to the gallery. Tonight, I'm delighted to be introducing the poet Adnan Asaya. Adnan was exiled from Iraq in 1993 because he spoke out against oppression and injustice. This evening, he'll be reading a selection of his poems in Arabic. The poems have been translated by Marja Burji Ajata and Stephen Watts. Stephen will be reading the poems this evening in English. Over to you. مرتبكا 
هل عن يا سيدي انا شاعر قصيده نفخ ابتسم واثقا مهيبا لا يهم كذلك واشار الى سيافه الاسود راحكا علم اذا كيف يكتب شعرا عموديا بشطر راسه الى شطر وعجز واياك ان تخل بالوزن واياك من الزحاف والعلل امسك السياق من يخف المرتجفه وهو بسيفه الضخم على عنقي فتدحرج راسي واصطدم بالنافذه التي انفتحت من هول الصدمه فاستيقظت هيئا يابس الحلق لارى عنقي مبللا بالعرق وكتاب الطبر ما زال جاثما على صدري وقد اندعكت اوراقه تحت سنابك خيول هولاك التي كانت تنهب للممالك والخلاف وامامي وشيش وامامي وشيش التلفزيون الذي انتهى بثه بنهايه خطاب الرئيس الطويل. قفزت مرعوبا رايت فراشي ملطخا بدم الكتب التي جرفها نار دجله ممتزجا بالطمي والجهشات. حاولت ان اجمع شطر راسي الذين التصقا بجانبي التلفزيون واصبحا اشبه بسماعتين يبثان الوشيش نفسه. في الصباح على غير العادة لم أقرأ نعي في الجريدة ولم تقف سيارة الحرس أمام البيت وعليها جنازتي ولم أعرف تفاصيل ما حدث بل كان هولاك ضجر من الوشيش فقام بنفسه وأطفى التلفزيون وعاد إلى كتاب الطبل ثانية مبتسما واثقا مهيبا بعد أن رفسني بخستي لأنني نمت قبل أن أكمل بقية سيرتي The guards took me to Hulaku. He was sitting cross-legged on his colossal throne. A crowd of ministers, poets and slave girls in front of him. He asked me, why haven't you sung my memory, my glories? I trembled, anxious, and mumbled, sigh, I'm just a prose poet. He smiled, cocksure and awesome. Don't let that trouble you. Then, laughing, he made a sign to the dark executioner. Teach him how to write column and poetry by bisecting his head into its first and second heavy stitch. Take care not to break his cesure. Beware of his beta and the infidelities of prose. The executioner seized me by my collar, hacked his huge sword across my neck. The head rolled down and struck the window, and it opened at such a blow. I woke up, terrified, my throat dry, felt my neck wet with sweat, and Altabari's book still lying on my chest, its pages crushed under the hooves of Hulaku's horses, which were storming through kingdoms and fortresses, and in front of me the humming of the dead television, the president's interminable broadcast speech long gone to zero. I jumped up, terrified. Saw my bed, solid with the blood of the books, carried away by the tigress and churned in with muds and sobs. I tried to put the halves of my head back together, but they were stuck like two ears on top of the television, as if they were the speakers giving sound to the humming. In the morning, I didn't see any customary obituary in the papers. The guard's car didn't stop in front of my house with my coffin on top. And I didn't get to know the details of what had happened. That was because Ulaku got irritated with the humming, so he just upped and switched the whole noise off and went back to Altabari's book, smiling, cocksure, and awesome, having taken good care to give me a kick in the balls because I'd fallen asleep before I'd finished reading his histories. <laughs> إلى أعلى مجلد في بغداد وأراني كل معادنها ومعابدها وكنائسها لا في الأجراس وأشار لي أحسي كم دعوات حرة تصعد يوميا من أنفاس الناس لا 
لكن لا أحد حاول أن يصعد في معناه إلى رؤياه ليونيه ما عاف طغات الأرض وما اشتط الفقهاء وما فعل الحراس الهلاج الهلاج took me to the highest hill in Baghdad and showed me all its minarets and temples churches and bells and he beckoned me look he said can't how many prayers rain daily rise up from our breaths yet no one ever tries to ascend from his meaning to his vision so as to warn him of the ravages of all the tyrants the deviations of the jurists and what all the gods have done Very تهجدات لم ترى ربك الا بالنصر وبالدم وانا ابصر في الكلمه في النغمه في زرقه عينيها واليم Four nights prayers read one by one. <laughs> you see your God only in blaze and blood. I perceive him in a word and a song and in the blue of her eyes on the sea. You who are a man, consider how you talk with your Lord and the devil. Is it then too much to hope you learn how to talk with your fellow men? لا ناقوس ولا مهبلة يا عبد لماذا لا تسمع ربك في النهاية؟ Bell or minaret or servant of God, why won't you hear your Lord in a flute? London 2001. يمنونني سرورا ويبوغونني ويبوغونني فصولا ثم يفارسونني ويطبعونني كاملا ويوزعونني على المكتبات ويشتمونني في الجرائد وانا لم افتح فمي بعد. Critical. They write up my lines, split me into chapters, catalog my references, print the whole works. Get me in the bookshops, bad mouth me in print, and I haven't even opened my mouth yet. Awrak min sirat abu tumfa rakum sitt. Saqdufu jawalidi ila sama tawamun ma'man la yinukun al ahdiya. Wa amdi hafiyan ulansu uhul al shawari al maati al qadamiya. محدقا في وجوه المتخنين وراء زجاج مكاتبهم. اه لو كانت الامعاء البشريه من زجاج لراينا كم سرقوا من رعيتنا. ايها الرب اذا لم تستطع ان تملا هذه المعده الجرباء التي تصر فيها الريح والديدان فلماذا خلقت لي هذه الاغراس النهمه؟ واذا لم تبعهم على سبيل جسدا عنودا فلماذا خلقت لي ذراعين كبيرة؟ وإذا لم تمنحني وطنا آمنا فلماذا خلقت لي هذه الأقدام الجوابة؟ وإذا كنت ضجرا من شواي فلماذا خلقت لي هذا الفم المنذلة بالصراحة؟
I'll kick my socks toward the sky in solidarity with those who don't have shoes and I'll walk barefoot, feeling the muds of the streets under my feet, staring at the faces of the glutted inside their glass offices, or if human intestines were glass, so we could see how much they stole on our bread. Lord, if you couldn't fill this starving stomach where worms squirm and belch, why did you create me with these wolfing molars? And if you didn't flesh my bed with a twig tender body, then why didn't, did you give me such burning arms? And if you didn't grant me a country to be safe in, why did you godsend my wandering feet? And if you became exasperated by my complaints, then why did you give me this mouth and gush with screams night and day? أين ذاك نسيتهما إلى لحامي للقطارات الراحلة أين أمراتك اختلفنا في أول مجر دخلناه أين وطنك ابتلعته المجزرات أين سماؤك لا أراها لكثرة الدخان ولا فتات أين حريتك إنني لا أستطيع النطق بها من كثرة الارتجال Where are your hands? I forgot them, waving to the departing trains. Where is your womb? We argued in the first shop we stepped into. Where is your country? Tanks have devoured it. Where is your sky? Invisible from all the fumes and billboards. Where is your freedom? Unspoken because I've trembled so much. A man in 1996. في حديقة الجند المجهول الجند الذي نسي أن يحلق ذقنه ذلك الصباح فعقبه العريف الجند القتيل الذي نسوه في غبار الميدان الجند الحالم بلحيته الكثة التي أخذت تم شيئا فشيئا حتى أصبحت بعد عشر سنوات غابة متشابكة الأغصان تصدح فيها البلابل ويلهو في أراضيها الصبيان ويتعانق تحت أثيائه العشاق الجندي الذي غدا متنزل للمدينة ماذا لو كان قد حلق دقنه ذلك الصباح In the garden of the unknown soldier The soldier who that morning forgot to shave his hair and was punished for it by his sergeant The soldier that had fallen in the dust of battle the beautiful soldier with his thick beard that got to grow little by little until after ten years it was a forest of tangled bush such as nightingales sang in his branches and children always played on his swings and lovers came closer in his shade. That soldier who grew into a park for the whole town what if he'd shaved his head that day? A man that didn't وقد تظلم الأفق واسود وجه الصباح ولا بأس كونت ما قد تبقى 
من السنوات البخيلة ثم اندفعت إلى أين؟ بينك والموت فوهة لا ترعى وتسأل طفلين وتسأل طفلين بابا متى ستعود؟ إن كفعت ما صح علي فيه هو الوطن الآن فارتجف القلب من وهن أبيض واختنقت بدمعة كل يا سماء العراق أما من هواء تلفت كان السماء العراق مثقبة بالشرايا وكانت تعثرت في صخرة فرأيت عبائي المزقة يسخر مني لا بأس فليكتب المتخمون وراء مكاتبهم عن لحوم الوطن في غرفة قبل عشرين كانت ترطق في وجه من بنطلون العتيق وتمسح ذلتها بالدموع أبي أين يوميتي الصحاب مضوا لمدارسهم الصحاب مضوا للرصاص والزمان أصم الصحاب 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 سقطت فلم لمني وطني وركبنا إلى الساتر نتحدى مع الموتنا أينا سيخب يا وطني رأسه ولنا خوذة واحدة Sky and Helmet, which is dated back down in 1986. I was bewildered before the bullet, both of us together there beneath the flattened sky, dreading death. I gathered my life's pieces into my rucksack and portioned it out for my son, for my library, for the trenches, for childhood and orphaning, and for my woman, poetry and poverty, for the wall is chronic bleeding and for memory just ashes. Now what is left to you of the life you used to carry between bunker and hood, always fearing the shrapnel of time? The sergeant said, this is death and it doesn't deal in addition, subtraction. So choose a whole side of your desire. This is a time for holes and for heads. Or Run for it, right now, from such impossible death, for there's no way out. The earth is narrower than we thought, narrower than that miser's palm. And who will take the orphan to safety, where the horizon goes dark and the face of morning backs out? No worries. I piled together what was left of me and charged ahead. But where to? Between you and death there's an invisible muzzle, and the question two small children asked, Daddy, when are you coming back? I turned round. The sergeant yelled, This is your homeland now. My heart shuddered, white with weakness. I choked with tears of humiliation. Sky of Iraq, is there air to breathe? I looked everywhere. Iraq's sky, punctured with shrapnel, and it was. I tripped on a rock, saw my burst boot laughing at me. No worries. Let the fat clerks who sit behind their desks write about the fat of the land. In a room, 20 years ago, she used fearfully to mend my worn trousers, washing off her shame with her tears. Father, where's my pocket money? My friends have gone to school already. My friends have gone to their bullets. Such destinies are death. My friends, my friends, my fr I fell and my homeland gathered me in, and we raced to the barricade, challenging death together. Which of us will protect, O oh my homeland, his own head? We have just one helmet, just one. I died in 1996. So far we've read, quite rightly, I think, Arabic first, uh, and then the English, but for the last poem, which is slightly long, I hope you can be patient with us, um, uh, and in order to have the Arabic heard first in the reading, but also last in the reading, I will read the English translation first, and then we'll, we'll read the original. Um, but I think also because it's longish, we're going to read it in three, three sections. القصيدة الأخيرة سيقرأها هو أولا، القصيدة كتبت طبعا نسيت أن أقول أن القصيدة سماع في خوذة كتبت بالعراق 86 هذه القصيدة كتبت في القطب في مدينة اللوليا بال 
الشمال السويد سيقرأ هو في البدء وأنا أتبعه هكذا تفكر The little part of Ristalatol Bufran. Lying on my back and looking up at the sky, I count the sighs rising up to God each day, and the drops of rain dripping from his eyelids, and I call him on the phone and ask for him. And his secretary replies that these days he's so busy, so snowed under, with all our tattered petitions stacked in the storerooms. Oh, my lady, I'm out of turn. I need to see him, if only for one moment, but he's never replied, whatever I've asked. I want to appeal to him before I take leave of my miserable life, and before he lays, me, be lays before me the inventory of my sins. My God, the most just, did I lose such a vast paradise simply on account of one apple? Was it because of but one fallen angel that I had so to prostrate myself in humiliation? المحذوف من رسالة الغفران مستقيا على ظهري أحدقه في السماء الزرقاء أحدقه في السماء الزرقاء وأحسي كم عدد السفرات التي تصعد إلى الله كل يوم وكم عدد حبات المطر التي تتساقط من جفنيه أدير قرص الهاتف وأطلبه ترد سكرتيرته الجميلة أنه مشغول هذه الأيام إلى أذنيه بتقليب عرائضكم التي تهرأت من طول تمن ملها في المخازن يا سيدتي أريد رؤيته ولو لدقيقة واحدة ما من مرة طلبت ورد عليه أريد أن أسأله قبل أن أودع حياتي البائسة وقبل أن يضع فواتير الطويلة أمامي يا إله العادل من أجل تفاحة واحدة خسرت جنانك الواسعة أمن أجل أن يجد لي ملاك واحد لم يبقى شيء في التاريخ إلا وركعت أمامه I simply want a patch of this earth to lay me down and shoeless to sleep. Just one loaf of bread from among the teeming ears of wheat that sway before me like dancing wastes. I sit in front of the door of the Kufa Mosque. I sit in front of the Cathedral of Lund. I sit in front of the Wailing Wall. I sit in front of the Temple of Buddha, my hand palm pressed to my knee, and I see how many times we've raised our hunched backs, and how many times we've bowed ourselves down, and in spite of all this, no one pays any attention to our gutted gush of tears. I want to go one day to the kingdom to see where the clouds of our moaning end up, and this planet that's been rotating with our scuffles and drums, our curses and supplications, down so many millions of years, as to wake him from his cosmic siesta, that he might look out from his balcony and observe us. And who knows, maybe he's gotten bored with our grievances and has turned his holy face away and forgotten us forever. يا أبانا يا أبانا الرحيم أعرف أعرف أنك لن تضحك على ذقوننا مثلهم لكنني مهان ويائس أريد شكرا من هذه الأرض الواسعة أضع عليه رأسي ونعالي وأنام أريد رغيفا واحدا من ملايين السناب التي تتمايز أمامي كقصور الرقصات أجلس أمام باب مسجد الكوفة أجلس أمام كنيسة لوند أجلس أمام حائط المكة أجلس أمام معبد بوذا ضغطا راحتي على ركبتي وأحسي كم يصعدون بعضنا المحدودة كالسلالم وكم يزلون ومع هذا لا أحد يلتفت إلى دموعنا المنسابة كالمزاريب أريد أن أصعد يوما إلى ملكوته لأرى إلى أين تذهب ويوم عشرجاتنا وهذه الأرض التي تدور بمعاركنا وطبولنا وشتائنا واستغاثاتنا منذ ملايين 
من سنين ألم توقظ من قيلولته الكونية ليقل من شرفته وينظر لنا من مدري ربما سئم من شكوانا فأشاح بوجهه الكريم ونسينا إلى الأبد. It seems I'm kicking this terrestrial globe with pokey shoes and that I'm not letting it hit the ground until I can pass it back to him. And then he can reply to me, out of sight of the exegetes and dervishes and preachers, if you and only you were master of the hidden and disclosed not your secrets to anyone, then how did Satan come to know that I ravaged havoc on this planet? And if you denied me the blood of grapes, then why did you allow it to others? And if the wicked could not get on board Noah's ark, but were instead drowned in the seas, how are they come back to this earth again? When heaven shall be split asunder and listened to, and obey its Lord as it must, and when the earth shall be stretched out and shall cast forth all that was in it and be empty, what will happen to Van Gogh's paintings? and Mutanami's Hasidas, and Shakespeare's plays, and the Nahajal Borokha, and Mozart's music, and what will be left of us in the museums of paradise. And if in your vast paradise I could find ink and wine and read pens, then I might publish my poems without need of the censor. And if you were to give me 10,000 hurries to dance, what would be left? Thank you once again. 